Okay. As I told you, let me see if it works. Perfect. We are here. Uh, compartir, share, screen this one. So here we are. So, um, whoop. let me see if it works. Right. Okay. So in practice one, we are going to talk about planning all the different stages or all the different activities we, we need to decide before we start gathering information. And the first thing, these are just the steps of the final report you have to do. So what I do at the beginning of the class is just coming back to the script, to the different sections for you to know what uh, uh, that this uh, practical class is linked to one specific section. In this case, section number four of the study says, uh, uh, that you have to uh, de uh, define the purpose and the objective and the type of a study. The, in the purpose of the study is written in the instructions of the teamwork. In the first slide, at the end, it explains the context where we are going to do the study. And basically, in the objectives, we, we, we link the objectives of this study to understanding the different factor that conforms customer experience in the different companies you have chosen, uh, define and understand why the customer journey map is useful to understand the customer experience, and also some something some different things related to the profile of the customers. Why understanding the profile of the customer is important? Because imagine we have a group of people that are very dissatisfied with our product. It's important to know if this dissatisfaction is linked to the age. Maybe younger people are less satisfied than older people, or male, female, whatever. These kind of variables are useful in marketing, very useful. So the first thing you need to do is to try to write in some, at least in a general way, the objectives. And afterwards, in the section of methodology, we need to think about the different steps that, that include the planification of, of each of the uh, say, techniques. Basically, in our case, we are going to do or to use in-depth interview and discussion group. I have put here observational methods, but we are not going to use in this, in this course observation. So these are the steps and I'm going to give you some examples in a while. Let's go to the, to the practical slides and you're going to understand better. Why? Okay, first of all, we are going to talk about the importance of planning. Why is important planning? before doing anything. It's important because think about this. We are going to ask the collaboration of ex external people, users, for example. We are going to do a focus group with people mm -hmm. and it's going to be time consuming and it's going to be costly. Not in the case of the study of, of you that are students. You are going to try to find people that have been to this restaurant or to this thematic park or whatever for free. But in real life, we have to pay people. How much? It depends. It depends on the difficulty or the convenience of the study to the person. So in one way or another, we have to pay for the time or for the effort. So if we don't do, we only have one shot. If things, if we don't gather the proper information at the first time, it's going to be difficult to recontact individuals to gather information again. So it's important to spend time enough making these decisions at the beginning. In my mind, for example, if I have to do a study, a qualitative study of three months, I think it makes sense to spend one month or one month and a half uh, defining, planifying, planning the study before gathering the information. Mm -hmm. Gathering the information is fast if you have done things properly. So we are going to talk about the importance of planning. I'm going to give you some examples. And finally, we are going to talk about something different that is the transcription. And I'm going to explain you why later. So we, we have in mind, this is on the slides of the class. If we, we have in mind that there are different stages, the first part is the determination when we do a study, the determination of the need of information. And the need of information when we are doing a study, any study is related to the object. So, if we have three objectives, we need to gather information about these three objectives. 
-hmm. If I do an in an in-depth interview to a person, one hour, for example, talking to a person, if I don't have a clear idea of which are my objectives, maybe we can spend this hour speaking about different things, but not talking about the, my objectives. So it can happen, it usually happen, that at the end of the, the, of the interview, imagine we spend time and money to gather 10 interviews, and at the end, I find that I have forgotten asking important things, mm -hmm. and I cannot come back. It's no chance for that. So whenever we have the objectives, the first thing we have to do always is, is to write the script. A script basically is a set of questions. How many? It depends on the study. But a set of questions that is going to guide the interview. It's going to be our support. It's not a questionnaire. They are not closed questions. They are open questions. But it's going to be helpful for us to, okay, we have to cover these 10 questions. We have one hour or between 30 minutes and one hour. Okay, let's go into organize. If you are doing an interview and the person wants to talk about a different thing, it's great because it's additional information, but at least we need to cover the things we are looking for. So writing the script, I'm, I'm going to leave this open here because the script, we are going to talk about a, a, your specific script. And this is the first part, determination. And the second part is the research design, thinking about which technique we are going to use. What are the different elements that are conformed by this technique? So here you have in the slide, we need to elaborate a script. In this pr practical session, you are going to do a very short script because you don't know exactly where we, what are we, I, uh, we require you to do. In some weeks, we are going to cover more things and you are going to polish this script. And in, a three, in two or three weeks, you are going to have a better script. But at the beginning, have an idea that you need to look for some open questions to understand the customer experience of your clients. Can be a thematic park, an airline, uh, whatever. The different companies you have chosen, hotel. Um, specifically, in our case, what are the objectives? And I have put some elements here that remember that in our case, we will emphasize customer experience, customer journey map, and customer profile. These are the things we need to include. And I know we haven't told you again uh, yet what is this customer experience, customer journey. In practice zero, the third part, section three, you need to look for this a little bit, to look for books, to look for uh, documents where you find definitions of customer experience, customer journey map, what this is, and some variables related to customer profile. If you are talking about hotel, what important variables are related to a hotel that are different than other type of companies. Mm -hmm. Don't worry because regarding these concepts in, I don't remember that this is next week or in two weeks, we are going to have a professional talk of Carlos Mora that he's going to explain these things to us. His point of view, of course, we can com complement this with books and so on. So don't worry about this. We are going week by week. This is the idea of a customer journey map. In this case, it's an, an example of a customer journey map of a, a hotel guest journey. So the, the ones for the study, the one that I had chosen a hotel is going to be easier. In fact, there are some sectors that is easy to find examples of customer journey map easier than in other sectors. Mm -hmm. There's no problem because once you find a customer journey map, for example, for a hotel, it's not very difficult to adapt this customer journey map to a restaurant, to a thematic park. It's not very difficult. The idea is the following. In the customer journey map, we have basically usually three different sections. So your script is going to have three different sections, at least. I would say four, probably. Why? Because in any customer journey map, we want to map the different steps that a customer of our company follows from the beginning, before coming to our company, start looking for information, getting in touch with us, I don't know, by social networks, going to our website, any kind of thing. Mm -hmm. This is the pre, this 
sets this uh, first part of the customer journey map is the pre-purchase of the pre-experience. All the things that happen to the individual before they come to the hotel. Mm -hmm. After, so it's going to be one part of the, of the script. And questions regarding the elements before the experience. Second one is the, the experience itself, itself, the during. So when they come to our hotel, how we welcome them. When they do the check-in, there is an interaction point, a touch point there. We need to assess this. They go to the room. Afterwards, if the hotel has a breakfast, there is an, intera an interaction. If there are more things, the more complex the service you are analyzing, the more touch points. If you have this kind of bed and breakfast, hotel is going to be very easy. Room and breakfast, two touch points. Not more than that. But if there are more things, if they offer some kind of trips, if they offer, uh, if they have a spa or they, any, uh, any, any additional thing, there are some things to analyze. And afterwards, the post for So we are going to analyze, to use this, this customer journey map, and we are going to analyze different factors. I'm not going to go in there because Carlos is going to do it. But think about this. When you go to a service, there are some tangible things, but there are other, some, some other intangible things. So when you go to a restaurant, there are things that you can control, the atmosphere, the decoration, the, 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 the rooms, the smell, the quality. There are things that are touchable, or you can feel it by the senses, and there are other things that are more intangible are also important. But this is more or less the idea. We are going to include this. And also we are going to include some things, some questions regarding the profile of the individual. The profile, when I mean profile, is gender, age. There are some things that you don't need to ask. If you're doing an interview, gender is useless because you know that if it's a girl or a boy. I know this is very complex nowadays because of the gender. How do you feel? Do you feel more? You can do it as complex as you want. With age, you can ask the age or not. Education is important. Uh, country of origin, um, configuration of the family. You are young, all of you. Your family is you, basically. Oh, you have parents or whatever, but you are you. But if we are talking about uh, older people, they can have children, they can be married, whatever. So we can analyze elements regarding the profile. And these are the things we are going to ask in the script. Why this script is so important? And we have to decide this before gathering the information. Because if I convince a person to be part of a study and he or she spend with me half an hour, one hour of his or her life, if I miss important questions, I'm not going to have a second chance. Well, as long as I don't pay a lot of money. If I pay him or her a lot of money, he's going to come back, but we want to avoid this. So to, uh, to, to avoid these problems, we have to think carefully before. This is why planification or planning is very important. Here you have, for example, in personal in-depth interview. In-depth interview, you're going to see with Carla in the, practical, in the theoretical classes is basically one-to-one -one interaction. I'm the interviewer and it's going to be only one person. In-depth interview is very interesting because it's allow, it allows you to Analyze in, in depth and experience. More in depth than if you have a, a group of person. If I, had, I talk to you, you can go more in detail and you can explain me what your reasons to do one thing or another. So in depth interview is very interesting. We are going to see in a while that there are other techniques like focus group. Focus group is not exactly, it's like an interview, but a group interview. It has advantages but it has disadvantages. If you have four or five people together, they are not going to give you the same detail that if you have individuals alone. Mm -hmm. Apart from that, there is a group conditioning. If you are alone, you're going to give you your opinion without any conditioning. If I put different people together, some people are, are reluctant to say what to really think because they are together. I don't know what they are they going to think about my opinion, my whatever. So they are, they are not exactly the same. 
Focus group is not an in, a group interview. They are a little bit different. So these are the steps we are going to follow. Whenever we have to do, in, or you start doing uh, uh, chap, uh, practice number one, you have to think about these five elements. Preparation of the script. So in this case, you need to think about the objectives. You need to think, think at least the first thought about the questions you are going to include in your script. That means that is sit all the group together and think, okay, what kind of questions are important to understand the experience of a person to my hotel, thematic park, whatever. So you are going to divide this experience into pre, during, and post. And for example, write the first version of three questions before, three during, three after, for example, just a draft. The first draft. Don't worry, because in two or three weeks, we are going to explain you more, and you can polish this first version of the questions to some better questions. But at least write some of them. Explaining, of course, our study uh, is aimed at analyzing customer experience for this hotel. So as we know that this hotel has this, this, and this, this is the script we consider could be a good script. First thing. The second one, selection on the, of the interviews or, or of the interviewees. How to select the individuals. And in this case, you have to think about what would be the best way to do it. Not the way you are going to do it in the study, because we are in a class. I know you are in a class. But I, what I want you to do is to put you in the shoes of a consultant with money and think about what do you think is be the best way to gather information from your public? In some cases, it would be, for example, if we are in a hotel, if I were doing a study in a hotel, I would, be, I would choose, for example, to do the interviews in the hotel premises, inside the hotel, because people are there, I can have facility in the hotel. If I'm doing a study, for example, um, sorry, uh, selection of the interview is, uh, is the, the, of course, in the hotel, but when we talk about selection, means how to choose individuals that are representative of the population. And I'm going to give you some examples and counter examples. Imagine that you are doing this study and you decide to do this study in a hotel. And you are going to do the study only in the weekends because it's better for you, you have more free time. You go to the hotel, you talk to the managers, they allow you to do it there, and so on. And we choose 10 people. Is it good or bad? Well, could be worse. But it's not perfect, because we know in a hotel that people that uh, stay in a hotel are different, those that stay on the weekends, than during the week. Because in the week, I'm going to have this kind of business profile, people that travel to the city because they are doing business, whatever. And in, in, the, in the weekend, I'm going to find different people. So as you see, the type of people, is, this sample is not going to be represented. So we need to think about what is the best way to select the individuals. And of course, how many people? When we talk about selection of the individuals, all the things that I'm explaining, Carla is going to explain in detail. Just, just an introduction. Selection of the interviewers, interviewees. See, this is not okay. Uh, how to select the individuals? Well, it depends on the heterogeneity on the population. This word is, seems very difficult, but think about the following. How many people to choose, depending on how different they are? If I'm doing a study regarding university students, it's very easy. Because 90% of the students of this university are be between 18 and 23. 60% women, 40% men, approximately 5% um, around 5% international students, 5%, 10%, not, not very complex. But if I do the same for a thematic park, things change a lot mm -hmm. because there are young people, old people, families, national, international, it's crazy. So it's depending on how complex is the population, you are going to need more or less people. Duration of the interview. Well, the duration of the interview basically is defined by the script. How many questions do you need to do? What, uh, how in-depth 
do you need to analyze the experience? Usually, when we talk about the duration of the uh, interview, we are between in, in half an hour, one hour, could be more, could be less. Mm -hmm. But this is more or less the idea, half an hour, one hour. Where to do it, the location, as I told you, the optimal location regarding your clients. If I'm doing, for example, Balearia, there was a group, I don't know if in the English or in the Spanish group, that were, they considered to do Balearia. That is kind of one cruise that goes from the from this uh, region to Balearic Islands. This is, this is the kind of trip they do. So there are many ways, but if I know that the trip is some hours, maybe I can do the interviews on the boat because people in, on the boat, they do nothing. So they can spend with me half an hour doing the interview. Mm -hmm. Can you follow me? My, 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 uh, um, in other cases, if it makes sense, depending on the, the target group, we can do the interview online. In the past, we were not very prone to do the interviews online, but since the COVID crisis, most of the things have moved from offline to online. So we can use this, we can record, we can, we are going to talk about the record later. And the number of interviews, how many people I need, I told you before, it depends on how complex. If the population is very homogeneous, I, less, I need less people. If the comp population is more complex, imagine that I want to study, analyze tourism issues in Benidorm, compared to analyzing tourism issues in Barcelona. It's completely different. Barcelona is a worldwide uh, city. You find people from all over. Asian, American, they from all over. Benidorm is basically 50% British and 50% the rest. Or 50 and maybe I'm short, very short. So it's easier because I need to find British people, first of all. And afterwards, some of, but in Barcelona it's completely different. So as you see, the complexity of my target group uh, conditions the number of interviews. Here I'm going to give you a couple of examples that we have developed in these last years in, in the department. The first one, uh, the company that gathered the information for us was Likert, uh, Carlos Mora, the C is the CEO, that is the, is the one that is going to give the professional talk in one week, is the CEO of Likert. And they do marketing, market research, uh, sociological studies, many, uh, many types of studies. So in that in that uh, study in the uh, where you have two uh, images on the on the left, uh, we gather information in hotels in Benidorm, and we wanted to have a calm, uh, calm interviews, a calm place, without sound and so on. And even we have some agreement with the hotel; they allow us to do it on the premises. It was interesting because. The type of tourists we were interested in were tourists that spent at least one week in Benidorm. There are many types of tourists, but usually the ones that come, come from one week, two weeks, all included. So we know they are going to spend a lot of days. So we can go there, we can ask them, what day do you have one hour free? At what time? So we arrange the different interviews, we go there, or they go there, they gather the information. Mm -hmm. In, uh, on the left, on the right, we have another study we, we developed also before uh, the, the pandemic. Was uh, we analyzed virtual tourism, but with virtual reality in um, elderly uh, home or retirement homes. These people that doesn't live in their own homes, they live all together in places for old people, and. And when we talk about old people, it's not 78 people just retired. We are talking about around 90 years old, old people. So that interviews, the one that you are looking at the, at the right, this is the experience. You see this, it's a, a woman experience, a virtual, a virtual reality tour. In that case was to Venice, to the city of Venice. After the tour, we asked them, we made an a, a in-depth interview and also we Make them, make them to answer a questionnaire and so on. So as you see, it's far more complex to gather information in the study of the right than in the study of the left. Because in the study of the right, people are older, 
it's more complex, the public, maybe they have some kind of disabilities, difficulties. It's not easy. So in both cases, we needed to do an in-depth interview face to face. But in some cases, we can uh, you opt for a more digital way. We can do it by using Zoom, um, Skype, or any kind of other device. Important that allows us to record image and sound because we need to have image and sound, at least the voice. And we are I'm going to explain to you later why. And we when we talk about focus group, this is the, the, the other technique we are going to use. It's very similar. The steps are more or less the same, but of course the decisions are different. Objectives, the first of all, first of all, we need to think about the objective, the same that happened in the interview. The second one is not there, but basically is the script because objectives and the scripts are very linked. Selection of participants, how to select the individuals. Last year, for example, I did a study um, for the Chamber of Commerce, Chamber of Commerce of, of Argentina. They, they were doing a study to sell some products from Argentina or to export products from Argentina to Spain. And and they asked me to do some uh, or several focus groups. It was easy. Why? From for me, because they only require me to do some focus group for from uh, for of, of, of part of the, my task was to do some focus group of people below thirty years old. That means above eighteen years old and below thirty years old mm -hmm. and above thirty years old. But they didn't tell me anything else. So what I did was choosing for the below 30 years old students of the university and for the above young people. Why young people above 30? Why? Because in this way, I could use um, online um, interview. It was cheaper for me. They didn't say anything. If I had to gather information from people of, people, uh, from people, uh, of 70 years old, I cannot do it with that because it's more difficult that they I used to uh, deal with uh, technologies and so on. Selection of participants, usually the number of people you need is decided by the client. The client says, you have 500 euros, 1,000 euros, whatever, this is the money. So from that money, 2,000, whatever, you need to think about how much money I'm going to receive. And apart from that, how much money I'm going to pay to each of the people. Last year, for example, in the study of, I don't remember very well, but I think in the study of, of the Chamber of Commerce, we gave five euros per person, five or 10. I think it was five for below 30 years old and 750. Not much, but if you multiply, this is money. So uh, the selection of participants, I, I did that this, this, this selection taking into account below and, third, and above, and the size I decided because they told me, we need minimum 10 uh, or two focus group of five people below two focus group of five people above. If we, had to, if, we, if we were talking about a study that you are doing, how many, how to choose? In my opinion, depending on the complexity of your target group. If the, your target group is very complex, maybe you need two, three, four different focus groups with different people, trying to put homogeneous group of people if possible. But imagine you have a client that says, no, I want to analyze families together. So you can create some focus groups of families, mm -hmm. father, mother, or mother, mother, father, father, I don't care about the structure, children, whatever. They usually say, I want a family with at least five people. With, if there are some grandfather, grandmother that lives with whatever, a large family. <clears throat> the location, the same. The location, the optimal location must be the most suitable for the target group, the most, the easiest for the target group. I remember I, I was part of one focus group in 2008 in Barcelona when I was living there for Donuts, for the company Donuts. They were developing the Donuts light and so on. And I live in the city center because I was working there. 
And they, the location they choose to do this, this study was a, um, a hotel in the city center with very good premises. And they had, they, 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 they booked all the different individuals and group uh, rooms, and it was very organized. And for me, it was very convenient because they, they, they came to me and they said, do you want to be part of this study? Yes. At what time? Whatever. They gave me a, a, a time and it was next to my, to my job. For me, it was very easy. Was more, more, I'm sure it was more, more expensive for them. But even that for me was easy, I went there without asking for more money, for example. Uh, the material. Do we need any material? Uh, in the case of this uh, study, we are not going to be to use additional material. But I remember in the case of um, in the case of donuts, they gave us donuts to taste, to smell, to compare. So there was material. So in some cases there are material, there is material. Also, if we are, for example, working with new technologies, sometimes they ask you, okay, download this application. Let's go to do some things. And once we have experienced the application, we begin the focus group. Yes. And how the company, how the business contact with the people who are gonna be the subject of the study? I like this question. It's, it's not easy. It depends on on the type of public do you want. I mean, imagine that you are, for, for example, the University of Al in our case, if we do a study, what we usually do is to hire the services of a third company and they do this task for us, but we help them. But in your case, for example, in the case of Donuts, they were looking for people with some profile. They, they, they were looking for margin. 10 people between this age and this age, male, female, whatever. It was not necessary in that case that you were consumer of the product. They didn't require that, but sometimes they, they, they do. It depends on the study. For example, in the studies we, we are going to do, we need to find people that have been to the hotel, that have been to the restaurant, physically, at least one time because we want to analyze an experience. And to analyze an experience, we need to be sure that the person has been mm -hmm. to that experience. So this is our key variable. In other cases, it's not necessary. Sometimes you are doing, for example, a focus group to understand the, the opinion of a group of people regarding something, and there is no condition. But do we contact different people through mail, through some kind of advertising? There are many ways, many ways. Um, nowadays, with the, the do, you know, do you know that the, in the last five years, six years, the regulation regarding privacy of information and so on have changed completely. So we can use any public information, any public information we are that we can access, that is public, to get in touch with them. And if they gave us the consent, we can start talking. I mean, imagine I want to do a study regarding one specific technology, and I want to find experts. I can go to LinkedIn, for example, the, the social network, and find people that are somehow related to this technology, because they are experts, whatever. And I can send them a message. Do you want to be part of a study? This is legal. If they answer me and they want to receive further information, great. I, what I cannot do is to use public uh, private information. I'm going to give you an example to, for you to understand. Me, as a lecturer, as your lecturer, I have access to your emails, individual university emails and personal emails, the ones you gave when you enrolled in the university. In theory, I cannot use these emails to send you advertising, uh, to send you, I cannot use. It. What I can do is to paste, for example, in Moodle, one uh, post saying, we are doing a study. All th those that are interested in uh, taking part in this study, mail me. As soon as you mail me, you are giving me your consent. Mm -hmm. This is the idea. Uh, if we are talking about, for example, a company, we can, if we are working for the company, the company can place also 
send the information to their customers. And the customers that are interested can reply, and the ones that are not, do not reply. But we have to be very careful with that because this kind of privacy with personal information is, 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 is difficult, it's difficult. Uh, but it's not that difficult. Imagine that you are doing a study regarding a restaurant. You can be in, at the door of the restaurant, wait for a family to go out and ask them, do you want to be part of a study? Yes. Okay, give me more information. You don't, don't give me. Mm -hmm. A material, number of, inter of focus groups. Well, it depends. The number of focus groups, once again, depends on the heterogeneity of the, of the of people. For instance, if I have people in the Spanish group, people in the Spanish group are all Spanish, 99% from Alicante province, and it's easy. You need less. But if you come to an international group, there are more nationalities, maybe you need more focus groups because the opinion is going to be more uh, spread. And the last part is the meeting style, how we are going to uh, the, um, guide this meeting. Are you going to uh, just organize the different opinions or are you going to be very strict? Five minutes per person, per question? Well, this is something to think about. Usually this depends on the public. If you have a public that is collaborative, that is open, you don't need to force. But sometimes you are doing a focus group and a person, there are some people that doesn't want to speak and you need to help them to express themselves. And, and the other way, you have people that they, they are the only ones that want to speak. You need to stop them. So this is an example of a focus group. This is an example of the focus group in the same study that I told you before. Virtual reality, virtual tourism in home retirement for uh, elderly people. In that case, as, as, as it was a very complex focus group, we decided before in the planning stage to use two moderators. Not one, but two moderators. Here you have Carla and Mila, another lecturer. Mm -hmm. Two moderators, and there were uh, six, uh, usually six or maybe eight, three and three or four and four. Why two moderators? Because it's a complex group. People are old, people have sometimes difficulty to express themselves. So it's a good way to uh, show that we support them. Sometimes one of the moderators were focusing on, one, on some people and the other one in the group. It's complex. In this case, and this is a good example. We recorded all the uh, focus group. Of course, the, the um, in-depth interviews as well. Maybe you cannot see because it's very small, but here you have a camera and here you have another camera. There are two. Here you have camera and camera. Because we wanted to have the image and the, the sound, but also the image of all the individuals. Because in this course, what we what we are, what, what we are going to analyze is the discourse. We are going to analyze what people says, all the things they say, but we are going to analyze exactly what they say, not an interpretation. You go and you say, summarizing this, this, and this idea. No, I want to analyze the words they use, the specific words. So for that reason, we need to record because this recording is going to be transcribed into words to a document. And this is what we are going to use in the program. We are going to use a software in a couple of weeks that is called Atlas TI, where that we put these transcriptions to the software and that we analyze several things. And we, analyze, we are going to include also the image, if possible, because the last uh, step to analyze the discourse of an individual are uh, expressive, are connotative things how they say the image of their face, if they smile, if they whatever, if they doubt and to analyze the things we need for the image. So now it's time to say one thing that Carla is going to explain for sure whenever you, uh, she arrives, but if we want to uh, rega uh, uh, record information, be audiovisual information, we need to ask the individuals for the express consent. 
That means if I have a, a one to one interview, the first thing I had to do before beginning, I had to say, okay, you can speak to the person. Okay, now we are going to rec start recording the interview. Before you start recording, and you say, okay, we are going to do a study for the for a subject. This is the group, whatever. This is what we are going to do with your information. Do you agree to allow us to record on video and audio this interview? Mm -hmm. And she or he can say yes, and that's enough. The same for the focus group. If it was more formal, well, usually what we do a written consent, but you don't need that. Just because we need the acceptance. They need to be aware that they have been recorded because we are going to use that information. So uh, here you have more examples. This is a focus group of, you are going to see these this short videos in, in the slides. Whenever the, the chapter comes, you are going to have these videos, you can have a look. The first one is for regular people, people from 30, and they speak about different topics. Here you can see uh, the group, and also they, have been they, they are recorded. The second one is related to young people, or younger people, children, basically. In this case, the ethical code of SMR, the International Ethical Code, says that for younger people, there is an specific um, ethical code. So first of all, like the most important, we need to have the consent of the parents or the tutors. If they are in the school and we are going to the school, we need to, we need to the, the, the consent of the tutor. But at the end, the tutor is going to ask for the permission of the parents. So you need the permission. It's not possible to do a study uh, by using uh, children Underage people, in this case, in the case of Spain, below 18 years old, without this cost. It's illegal. Very illegal. One of the worst things you can do. There is one, one chapter of The Simpsons. Uh, I don't know if you like The Simpsons. I think they are like in the 30th um, season. There is one chapter where the school uh, is in a huge crisis because of different things, and they have to sell. Well, there is a private company that comes to the school to support. Mm -hmm. And they use the school to do marketing research, mm -hmm. to develop different products for children. So, but without the consent of the parent, without this information. So it's this illegal. Mm -hmm. I think the video is also in, in the slide. And the last one, as you see, is a focus group, uh, an online focus group. The one in the, in the right uh, is, a, is an online focus group. In some cases, not in all the cases, we can use online focus groups. Usually, if the target group is young, it can be done. If there are people that are used to deal with technologies, it's not difficult. If the topic allows, if I, I want people to taste, try, whatever, I need people to be in the same place. But it's something, if it's something more general, in some cases, I can do it online. And that's it. These are the different steps we have to think about before doing uh, uh, doing this or uh, developing these techniques. Now I'm going to show you, because I'm going to change from one to the other, from one video to the other. What you have to do, you have two weeks. From now, two weeks. Remember that at the end of this week, you have to submit chapter A, practice zero. So in two weeks from now, two weeks and a little bit more, you have to submit what I'm going to say now. Choose one of these two techniques I have uh, explained to you, either the in-depth interview or the focus group. My recommendation, in-depth interview, for sure, in-depth interview. As an example, this is the first uh, draft. Choose one of these. Think about your company and develop all the different steps. Try also to develop some short script. And once you have done this, you need to use this script to record a 30, at least 30 minute interview. This one is to try, for you to try. So you can do it with one classmate, for example. If you are a group, you can do it with the other one. It's just to try. 
to see what you have done and also to, to put you in the shoes of the interviewer and in the shoes of the interviewee to see if it's diff difficult or easy to record and so on. Mm -hmm. My recommendation also is that you use one um, computer, for example, you can use Zoom. These kind of uh, programs are easier. Of course, you can use the mobile phone and you can record with the mobile phone or a camera, but this is more difficult. The first one is to start working in this process of interviewing somebody and deciding about the script and so on. So it's just to practice, okay? Mm -hmm. Once we have polished this, you are going to do some interviews and one focus group to your target group. It's going to be done late. So, even we have finished this, I'm going to jump to the next one. I'm going to finish this. <clears throat> 